WFFD TV presents Gentle Giant with Pam Minnick and Katie Kaufman. This week, Gentle Giants is in Southern California, where we'll show you how horses play an important part in the Tournament of Roses festivities. Typically, when you think of the Rose Parade, it's the thousands of flowers that adorn the beautiful floats that come to mind, but we'll learn about the history of heavy horses right here in Pasadena. Stay with us, Gentle Giants hitches up at the Rose Parade right after this. Welcome back to Gentle Giants. The amazing Tournament of Roses parade that we enjoy each New Year's Day started 124 years ago and featured horse-drawn carriages adorned by flowers. Pasadena's Valley Hunt Club first staged the parade in 1890. Many of the members formerly lived in the East and Midwest where the winter weather had communities buried in snow. They wanted to showcase their new California home's mild winter weather where the flowers were blooming and orange trees about to bear fruit. They held a festival to tell the world about their paradise. The Valley Hunt Club organized horse-drawn carriages covered in flowers, followed by foot races, polo matches, and a game of tug-of-war on the town lot that attracted a crowd of 2,000 to the event. Upon seeing the scores of flowers on display, they suggested the name Tournament of Roses. Long before a college football game was added to the festivities, chariot races were the thrilling entertainment. Horses, wagons, and riders are still an important part of the Tournament of Roses festivities. The equestrian chairman, Pam Knapp, has an important job of selecting worthy equine groups and keeping the heritage. To be considered, an extensive application is submitted to the Tournament of Roses, and each year that equestrian chairman carefully considers the submission. There's a limited time frame of each year's parade, so when a group is added, it means that someone is probably replaced. This year was the first time for the beautiful Jackson Fork Windermere Hitch, and also for the entry of gypsy horses from SD Farms. When I got the call that we were going to be in the Rose Parade, it was so exciting. It's, it, it's a long process, you know, and you're kind of sitting on pins and needles. And to find out that all of the work we had done, the cart we brought over from England, the outfits that we'd worked on, the drilling we had done, the rehearsal we had done was all going to pay off, and we were actually going to have an opportunity to appear in the Rose Parade, it was beyond exciting. Since many of the horses and groups travel thousands of miles and several days to arrive in Southern California for the New Year's Day Parade, the Tournament of Roses added a Quest Fest, an opportunity for the equines to strut their stuff. The Los Angeles Equestrian Center in nearby Burbank is the perfect place to house the horses. The drill teams can entertain the crowd in this arena that they can't do on the five-mile parade route along Colorado Boulevard in Pasadena. A Quest Fest is traditionally held three days prior to New Year's Day, which means for those traveling long distances, they spend Christmas Day on the road. The six-horse Black Percheron Hitch of Jackson Fork Lodge and Windermere Farms came from Pennsylvania, just shy of 2,600 miles. They spent more than six days on the road. While it's usually sunny in Southern California, a much needed rain began to fall on the Saturday of a Quest Fest. It didn't dampen the spirits of these exhibitors, but it did cause some challenges. The process for the Rose Parade actually starts with an amazing event at the LA Equestrian Center called Equus Fest. All the horses are given uh, five minutes to do a demo to sort of show the audience, the people who've come to attend Equus Fest, which every equine unit that's going to be in the Rose Parade has to attend. And then everybody does a demo and it's an opportunity, like I said, to show the audience 
what your breed is all about and it's a day-long event and it was it was fabulous except it poured rain the event itself was tremendous the rain was not so great and it was sort of it was funny because you know there are a lot of other breeds of horse there who do not have feather getting the gypsy horses from their stall into the arena now that was a challenge because that feather is like a wick for water and mud and we had plenty of them at Equus Fest this year. Equest Fest began with all the drill teams coming together for an amazing opening ceremony with fast moving horses and colorful flags. Television host Bob Eubanks has been a part of the Rose Parade for years. He explained how the horses are important to him. Well, I'm really protecting with the equestrian units, I really am, because I know what it takes to get up at O'Dark 100 and get your horse ready. Abraham Allaback couldn't wait to show off his driving skills as the youngest driver to hold the lines of a six-horse hitch. Stay with us, more beauty from the Tournament of Roses Parade when Gentle Giants returns. Welcome back to Gentle Giants. Being a part of the Tournament of Roses Parade is something that most participants call a bucket list event. A new entry this year were the beautiful gypsy cobs from SD Farms. SD Farm is the result of a unique partnership between the legendary horse breeder Stevie Down and television executive Wileen May. It provided the catalyst for the creation of SD West Farm. SD Farms has 50 gypsy cobs at Wileen's farm in California and more than a thousand where Stevie's family has been breeding for more than 200 years in the UK. Wileen is an executive with Fremantle Media, executive producer of American Idol. Her day job is a little different than her night job with her beloved horses. Uh, by day, I am an executive. I'm the production executive for um, American Idol. Um, I'm sure everybody's aware it's probably the most successful talent reality show um, that we've ever had on American television. And at night, uh, I'm a gypsy horse breeder. The gypsy cob is a much older breed than most people realize. While most Europeans were familiar with the breed, it was not held in high regard due to the prejudice against the gypsy community. It is a breed born of purpose, fueled by necessity. It was not some romantic, idyllic lifestyle that drove the gypsy community to create this horse. It was simply a matter of survival. The Traveler family needed a kind, willing, and dependable horse to pull their wagon, essentially their home on wheels. A per perfect gypsy cob is a horse that was built to work. It should have a nice short back. Um, Amira's back will be a little longer because she's got to accommodate a foal, but they should have a nice short back. They should have a nice apple butt. It should be rounded. It should not be like a ski slope. It really should look like an apple. Um, they need to have a lot of bone, you know, very thick legs and nice flat joints. Um, they have to have a very, you know, muscled neck that sits well into the shoulder because this is a horse that was bred to, to pull. I mean, they were bred to pull the living wagon, they were bred to pull a flat cart loaded with logs or scrap. They needed to be built that way in order to do the job. You know, they've been bred to have a nice sweet head that's proportionate to their height. Um, and then there's the feather, but the feather and the mane is the icing on the cake. The confirmation and the temperament are what really makes the Gypsy Horse special. SD Farm is a family business. Steve is an exceptional trainer. All of the horses trained to drive here at SD Farms are started by Steve. It's love and the passion for him and 
when you walk out a field like this and you walk amongst them and you can see um, you know grannies uh, aunts sisters um, mums you know and like I said I'd um, I'll never ever be rich and I'll never own that never own that mansion on the hill but what I got with these horses money can't buy the cart that we used in the Rose Parade is a very special cart. It's been Stevie's family for oh, probably 40 or 50 years, and the cart itself is 100 years old. We brought it over from England specifically so that we could use it if we were accepted into the Rose Parade. We started getting ready the minute we decided we were going to apply. So we started in February rehearsing, deciding which horses, getting riders to work with each of, the, uh, each of the horses. The riders were coming out and working with their specific horse 12 to 14 hours a week. And every Sunday, I would be a part of the rehearsal and go along, you know, where we were going to ride, look at how the formation was, who was behaving, who wasn't stepping up properly. Um, we did that from February until we stepped out onto the Rose Parade route, uh, January 1st. I've been a horse owner for 20 years, but I didn't decide to become a horse breeder until I discovered gypsy horses. And that decision to become a breeder didn't actually become real until I met Stevie Down. And that first led to a friendship which then led to a decision that we should be in the horse breeding business together. And for me, obviously, to suddenly now have access to the kind of knowledge that Stevie has about this breed, you, you couldn't, you, you can't put a price on that. Obviously, Stevie's family in England is his children, his son Steve, his daughters, Janie, Josie, Bonnie, Dixie, they are the ones who, you know, provide the real day-to-day -day care and management of that herd in England. Um, but that herd in England is as much a part of SD Farm as the 50 horses here. I mean, Stevie and I are partners 50-50 on both sides of the pond. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we'll learn just how early all these participants have to get up for the parade route when we return. Welcome back to Gentle Giants. Waking up early and being bundled up in the lineup all becomes worthwhile when thousands along the parade route and millions at home applaud and appreciate the beauty of the horses and the hitches. It hits you that you're actually going to be in the Rose Parade when you can see the floats passing like, you know, maybe a hundred feet from where you're waiting to actually get put into the parade and you're going, oh my god, I've been watching the Rose Parade since I was a little girl living in Rock Rapids, Iowa and now here I am, you know, we're going to go out and be a part of it. Grand Marshal Dr. Jane Goodall makes her way down Colorado Boulevard in an 1800s carriage provided by Frank Leidendiker. He is credited with keeping the Frisian line pure in the U.S and founded the Frisian Horse Association of North America. He came from Friesland, Netherlands in 1976 and shipped a stallion and two pregnant mares. The ancestors of Frisians were in great demand as war horses. Their size, combined with their athleticism and nimbleness, allowed them to carry knights in armor to battle. Dr. Jane Goodall shares the same values as the viewers of RFD and Rural TV and sent this message. I'm Jane Goodall. The land and the environment are as important to me as they are to you. 
I want to wish everyone watching RFD TV a very happy new year. Since 1852, Wells Fargo has been using the iconic stagecoach for transportation and delivery. Today, it's a symbol of their image, heritage, and values. The legendary stagecoach is priceless. Every year, people across the nation see the horse-drawn stagecoach of the Old West in the parade. The stagecoaches are authentic Wells Fargo-approved reproductions pulled by a specially trained team of sturdy match quarter horses. The use of lighter draft horses dates back to when speed of delivery was more important than pulling a heavy load. Medieval Times entry features the pure bloodline of the Andalusian horse, a Spanish breed that served royalty in the 11th century. This was their 27th Rose Parade appearance. The horses are bred and trained at the company's Chapel Creek Ranch in Sanger, Texas. Here is the Valley Hunt Club, which is still active. They began the Rose Parade tradition in 1890. These Frisian horses make a beautiful sight as they ride and drive in the parade. The beautiful wagon and Percheron horses of Jackson Fork Lodge in Wyoming and Windermere Farms in Pennsylvania was filled with more than 500 yellow roses as Gerald Allaback guides it down Colorado Boulevard. Joe and Marlene Ricketts and their family enjoyed watching the parade and all of the festivities this week. For the participants in the Tournament of Roses Parade, this is a bucket list event. Whether you're a band, a float, or one of the equestrian groups, this is right up there on the top things that you've done in your life. That's right, Pam. Don't forget about the famous Rose Bowl. <laughs> we want to thank everyone at the city of Pasadena, as well as the Tournament of Roses, for showing us such a wonderful time. We'll see you right here next week on Gentle Giants.